P Water Cooler, episode number 319. Woo, 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 wow, woo. 319. I, I know I had to go look it up and actually like update the website and everything to be able to do it. So 319. Uh, if you're playing along at home, you can go over to WPWaterCooler.com and you can go take a look at our website and all the stuff that we have going on over there. Um, let's go around the room real quick, get everyone introduced. No, we can't do sponsors. Are we allowed to do sponsors on this show? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you know? Uh, I don't want to have like a code of conduct type thing going on here or right. some weird little no whatever. And I, you know, they, they may or may not be in this room. How about that? So uh, let's go around the room real quick, get everyone introduced. C. Reed. Well, your head is, wow. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you. Yeah, how about you? What do you got going on? Tell us a bit about yourself. I am coming for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, my name is Say Reed. Sit, sit down, Leo. I can pinch your head. This, this, you just, like, this is coming for you. Uh, my name is Say Reed, and I make a press, teach for press, preach for press, at Say Reed Media on all the things. Representing the, uh, I believe it's the Y chromosome. I believe it is. <laughs> My math is right. <laughs> I think that's what she said. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Uh, Cosper, how about you? Tell us about yourself. Hey, everybody. Jason Cosper, a.k.a. Fat Mullenweg in the building. How's it going? Uh, a.k.a. Kurt Autoloader here with WP Water Cooler News. <laughs> Shamal and, uh, and John Brown are on assignment sitting out in the audience. Woo -woo. Um Happy to be here. Awesome. Good to have you on, as always. Leo, how about you? Tell us about yourself. Hey, everyone. Uh, I am one of the organizers here at Ward Camp uh, Orange County. That's where we are. Yeah. And uh, we're planning some like stuff in Long Beach. Do you know where Long Beach is? I do. It's like My on... phone's in Long Beach. My phone is number is actually from Long Beach. Curtain? It is outside the Orange Curtain. Yeah, no, I don't yeah. know. We actually have like things, and we have public like, transits and <laughs> wow. speed limits. Yeah, I don't wow. know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we organize things up there too. So we're, ho we're actually going to be hosting a WordCamp coming up soon, uh, probably like October or December. Sweet. But uh, yeah, that's, that's me. I do that stuff among other things and I do WordPress things. And um, I actually like help organize like WordPress core stuff too, which I think we could talk about that today if we want. We could, yeah. We could. Yeah. We, should, we should definitely talk yeah. about some core stuff. That sounds stuff. like a wonderful idea, Leo. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, that's, how about that's you? That's my NPR voice. I, am, I, I just uh, came up with it. I am uh, I'm Steve Zengen. I'm the founder of Zeke Interactive. I run the OC WordPress meetup, and I'm one of the organizers for WordCamp Orange County. What are you, what, what are you doing up there? What is she doing? I just I figured out what chromosomes I have. <laughs> I, I just wanted to be clear. Good job, that's Say. Awesome. Congratulations. Say, say literally cool. hit Wikipedia real quick to figure this out. Good job, Say. <laughs> I'm Jason Tucker. You can find I, I me over at Jason Google Tucker it. on Twitter. My website is jasontucker.blog. Um, I do this show as well as another show called WP Blab. That happens on Thursdays. Feel free to go take a look at that. That's um, it's a great show where we talk about social media marketing and all that fun stuff. I'm also um, the uh, one of the WordPress um, or one of the word one of the WordPress meetup um, that's easy uh, for you to say. hosts. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's literally your thing. Um, over in Whittier. So feel free to go take a look at that. You can go find us over on um, on our meetup website. Nice. Thank you. 605 party. Yep, yep. <laughs> I, just, I just want to say I'm also a co-organizer of WordCamp Long Beach, um, and I'm going to be organizing the after party. And uh, you should all, anyone, I can't see the audience. I can only see these four goofballs. But uh, you should all put that on your radar. You, you can't see them, but they're be... all asleep right now. <laughs> Hi. There's literally one person uh, in the front row. That's it. It's going to be lit. <laughs> It's, it's and the one person that's, in the front is just about John how many people just flipping us the bird. <laughs> I mean, that's very accurate to the weekly viewership, so I'm so, right at home. So what are we talking about today? So Leo was talking about core contributors. How should we do core contributors? Um. Okay, so today at WordCamp Orange County, I saw Jonathan DeRosiers, who's an awesome core contributor. He's a core a committer, actually. He has the ability to write code to the WordPress core stuff. He gave a great talk on how to contribute. And he talked about how he went on his life journey working at Boston University, all the way through to now doing a bunch of cool stuff with Bluehost and like helping teach people that you gotta build this stuff, otherwise the platform doesn't have it. And uh, yeah, like there's definitely a lot there, but I, maybe we can talk a little bit about how maybe we got involved in doing stuff in the WordPress space and maybe uh, talk about some of the controversy maybe. Well, well, but you said something interesting. So he is not just a contributor, he is a committer. Yes. What's the difference? So you can contribute in small ways. At, you can hey. microdose your contributions. Or you, can, you can just go be a torrent. Say, I'm sorry, did you just say you can microdose your contributions? Yeah, you can give tiny little bits to the WordPress course space. I just, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. Yeah. It's legal now, Steve. That's, it's OK. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that's where you put a larger contribution in water 
and then a, a little bit at a time, you go ahead and just dilute your okay. contribution. I'll use, right? what, I'll use, what, I'll use what Jonathan called it earlier. He called it a drive-by contributor. You can just like drop in one patch and be like, bye everyone. Okay. Or file bugs, you know, do stuff that's small, right? Like you, you gotta help out with the project in whatever way that's appropriate for the amount that you can give. Okay, and so what's a committer? <laughs> add a comma. Everybody loves it when people add commas. An Oxford comma? What's, what's a, what's a Any committer? comma. Just, just hey, you know, hey. there's a comma and you need it, just put it in there. Yeah, like, That's not true. A, people a don't like that. Don't, don't would be, do that. Would be, a, would be a small like thing, right? Because people, that's important to the project itself. And that's a microdose. That's a microdose. Okay. The, the other sort of, and there's a bunch of core, uh, core contributors who have done a lot of work over a period of time. People who have core commit access can basically write to the WordPress trunk that if they see something that's really important that they know needs to happen, they make sure it happens. And there's a whole bunch of them. You can see them on the website. Some of them are really cool people. Uh, actually, all of them are. Cool. I was gonna say, which are the ones that aren't? <laughs> <laughs> Name them. <laughs> well, but so my, my former colleague, like Weston Reuter, for example, have, does incredible stuff with PHP. Andrew Nason, who works with the White House, helps the WhiteHouse.org, like or WhiteHouse.gov, doing all kinds of really cool stuff. Like these people are really smart uh, cookies, and they're they're trying. Used to, to help the White House, I believe. What's just that? For the record, used to help the White House. Used to help the White House. I don't think Used he's to. still there. Oh, I don't. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That could be inaccurate, but I. I don't believe it. Steve, continues. Wikipedia, make but, it happen. You know. <laughs> so Wikipedia, the White House. I just thought I'd ignite some controversy because so, we were light on controversy. Well, it's really important that the community finds a way to communicate. So, like, there's a bunch of different ways that we do it. There's uh, what they call the P2 blogs. There's a space where people post stuff. But these people kind of go either around that or sort of work with their own sort of design decisions to make sure the platform doesn't fall apart. So the committers, they are not taking small doses, but they're instead the, the full whammy. They're, they're doing it every single day, most of the time. Uh, and some people are more active. <laughs> I'm just painting the same laugh. <laughs> they're tripping out. She's laughing at the full they're whammy. They're full dosing. <laughs> I, uh, I, I mean, they're doing really because, cool stuff. Because that's your range. It's, it's microdose or full whammy, right? Well, yes. Well, Jonathan DeRozier's like helped write a ton of stuff in privacy, he's helped fix a ton of stuff in short codes, like stuff that people aren't caring about, but really should. And if they didn't do that work, a lot of the stuff that actually the platform needs wouldn't get done. So my, I'm giving a little quick applause to the people who are doing that core stuff. Um, but you know, it, it's ready for you wherever you're doing it. Huh. So how do we get involved in this? Like as somebody who's not a core contributor, but how, how does someone, <laughs> Start, start navigating small. those waters. Start, start with the microdose. So you start, you start with like CBD oil or something, or what, what do you do here? <laughs> I, as far as I understand, the probably best way is to join with the WordPress.org uh, username, join the Slack, figure out the communities you probably fit the best in. So if you're a designer, you could do that stuff. If you're like Jason and your performance wonk, there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff. There's always performance things. Um, if you're like Steve and all you want to do is talk about business, there's probably a place for that somewhere. All right. Yeah. There's Maybe. really not. No, there's there's really not. There's not. There's no place. There's no place for Steve. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just meant there, there actually is a little bit of a dearth of a place, and this is something that's been a topic of conversation amongst the people uh, in general, is that there is less of a place for people who are not uh, contributing technically to contribute. So that's something that I think has been over the past uh, six months or so gotten some more attention in terms of how can you contribute in a way if you're not necessarily a hard coder or, you know, feel comfortable enough to do, you know, polls or whatnot. So that, that's something I think needs some more, some more work. So just saying, you know, you can contribute however you can, totally you can, but some of those contributions require more effort because there's not just an easy way to do that. Yeah, so f for people who do want to make a technical contribution and something that they do pretty well in track uh, is they have a tag called good first bug. And that is great for people who are like, okay, I know my way around PHP. I'm not shy with it. I want to start contributing. Like maybe they have a plugin or two in the repo, but they haven't taken that first step to, to run at the core code, a good first bug is a fantastic way to do that. I just pulled it up and it looks like there are 156 hmm. bugs, tag good first bug in there. So if you all have done plugin work and are, are ready to take that step and actually you know, commit to core and have your name in the release notes, 
So uh, let me get a good place to start. And I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not familiar with this. So, so these bugs are tracked and tagged as good first bug, meaning somebody should go and, and tackle that as their first project. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Got it. it it's good. I wonder how, who, who is evaluating the bug, like for the good first bug? Because if it's like Nathan, he's like, this is a great first bug. It's going to be like probably a little more complicated. It could than, be a hundred you know. hours. So there are people like, <laughs> There are people like me and a bunch of others who help maintain each of the components of WordPress. So they usually get tagged or associated with one of those. And then we will go through those issues and look for essentially stuff that hopefully is going to be easy or straightforward or simple, hopefully. And then we will tag that stuff and we say, all right, I know this patch only requires like three lines of changes. I could totally make that in an hour, but I could also give it to someone else and, and hopefully they can tackle it and then they get their first contribution. They get used to submitting a patch Got it. that feels normal in that process. Okay. And that is how all of the really simple bugs never get fixed. <laughs> Everyone. Well, hot take. <laughs> well, there are actually people who like, like they like literally died in the track looking for old stale tickets. They're like, I want to kill those tickets. I want them out of here. So there are people who like do their best to, to triage and I think they call it gardening is the, is the common one. So they, they clean up the garden, you know, okay. pulling the weeds out. Uh, Scott Taylor is really good at weeding out the super old stuff, the low hanging fruit. Super old stuff that nobody is really paying attention to. Uh, the one of the last uh, versions of WordPress that he did the lead on, there were a ridiculous number of commits where Scott was just like, "There are patches for this. Like, why have we not like pulled this in?" So he's he's closing out tickets that may not even be relevant anymore. Is what you're saying? Uh, closing them out that may not be relevant, merging patches that it's like, "Yeah, why don't we have this in here yet?" But they so still like, exist, so they need to be. Yeah. Because people like Leo are leaving it for other people to do. Right. <laughs> I mean, if, if it's something that's quick and that needs to get done, we'll get it done. Whatever we need to do. And if something sits for too long, we'll say, hey, like this issue is open. In fact, I think there's like probably an issue too that's sitting with me that should probably get addressed because that's what happens. Yeah, like, that would be a good first bug for you. Going through and making sure <laughs> that gets addressed. Yeah. Leo, what happens if the, if the, the bug is part of something that's deprecated? Like, is there is there like a way where it's like this whole section of code is man is now deprecated? Let, let's get a little mildly controversial. Things like short codes, XML RPC, even maybe RSS feeds, like stuff that people heavily use in WordPress. This stuff might consider might be considered legacy or even deprecated eventually by the project. And how we tackle this stuff? Like, do we add features to short codes, for example? Right. Really, we're telling. Did you just call short code right? legacy? Is that what you just did? I did. I heard it's the you classic editor. It's we're we're living thing. in a post that Gutenberg world. That was that was controversial. Yeah, yeah. That the, was the controversial. You heard it here, folks. Gutenberg. Here first. And you know, meta is, is no longer as important. We're trying to build things in blocks, and that's a it's harder. It's better. It's got a lot more flexibility for certain kinds of things. But it's entirely different. It's we have to start answering the question repeatedly. So what do, do we they, do with this old stuff? So do they kill those bugs then that are a deprecated code? Do they say like, eh, well, this is going away anyhow or whatever, or somebody else is going to inherit this because it's going to be pulled off into a plugin or, or something like it that? It all depends. Sometimes some of the core committers may say like, this is really important. We know that this is important. They might still make that patch. Someone might also say that isn't important. Just closing it won't fix it. But there's still, you know, versions of 4.9 being released yeah. for security patches. So it's still, you still have to actually all the way back to 3.6, I believe. Yeah. Yep. There are people for whatever reason who haven't updated to WordPress 4.0, let alone 4.5, let alone 4.9. Like, 4. it's crazy. 4.0. Yeah, what were you going to oh, say? Oh, you mean like they're still on, they're, they really are on legacy stuff. Like yeah. people who are in like three. You yeah. didn't mistake 5.0. You really meant that. Yeah. So security That's true. Pieces, people definitely are pushing back all the way through as much as possible. So if I find a bug that's in like the blog roll for links, I could submit it and then somebody's going to have to go and fix that. <laughs> you know, that's, that would be a good no, first. No, that, that, that would be that like might... a good first bug. I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay. I, 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 yeah, you know. That might get killed as a, as a won't fix because links are, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. So, uh, <clears throat> Along with that, there uh, I actually do not remember where I read this because I read too many things and I don't track them enough. But uh, there is something, that, uh, someone was talking recently about the concept of badge collectors. So there are these folks who are kind of, um, 
you know, making their way through the community and looking to essentially collect all of, which we probably have, you all probably have there somewhere, all the little badges that have the different icons on them for the different types of contribution and participation that you can do in the community. And uh, I, I read a really great article that was saying, hey, please don't just contribute just to contribute, just to be a badge collector. Because we, you know, it's not about coming in, like I was saying earlier, and changing a comma, you know, and then being like, yep, I'm a poor contributor, and now, you know, having that badge or whatever. So that's something to be aware of also. But what's, but what's wrong with that, right? Couldn't we I mean, just, if you're still coming in and you're fixing something, even if it's small, and you're collecting a badge, what's, what's the problem there? Couldn't we just make the badge a comma? I, I don't know what's the, the problem here. Badge? Yeah, the comma badge. <laughs> Are you saying that there's... I think it's, I, just again, annoy, I, it's probably just annoying to people. And I, again, like, so I'm not familiar actually with this either. Are you, saying, but... Are you saying there's gamification in this system? <sighs> on accident, but not really. Okay. I mean, huh. like, I, I, talking to Jonathan about his experience at Boston University, he was working on multi-site stuff, right? He was like, we got this really big, scary thing at our university. It's hard, it's a little broken, it doesn't have this, doesn't have that. So we're making these changes, ideally in WordPress core, so everyone benefits from this stuff and becomes easier to do the things we want to do. Like, he's trying to do this stuff with that purpose, right? Like, you should be doing things with a, from, coming from a good place. The badges don't really mean anything. It's like Foursquare or Swarm, right? Like, it doesn't really mean anything. It don't means don't everything. Mean anything. They yeah. don't mean anything. Pokemon they Go mean everything. Nothing, yeah, I see. I was just going to say. What's <laughs> Where's Hawkins mean, at? Hawkins, he just said that Pokemon Go does not count. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's I don't like, know who you like, are uh, anymore, Leo. It, it's like, who, whose line is it anyway? That anybody in the crowd yeah. remember oh, yeah. that oh, everything's yeah. made up and the points, points don't matter? Yeah. The points don't matter. I mean, the points do matter because it's a third of the internet running WordPress. Right. But, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, a little badge on your profile. Maybe more badges is a solution, you know? Like... Oh, yeah, more badges. There we go. Yeah, Got to catch them all, right? <laughs> and... I actually, uh, I think maybe... more badges is absolutely, is absolutely the solution because uh, you can, even like now in Facebook groups, you know, you can get badges for participating in the group. You can be like a conversation starter or all these things. And honestly, even if you don't want to be gamified, you're like kind of resisting gamified like me, uh, you can't help it. You're like, oh, I, I got that. I, I, I only have to post two more times to get another one. So I think I'll do it. So there is definitely a motivation factor. You know, that's the reason everything is being gamified. Gamified? Gamified. Game, gamified? <laughs> Game of a side yeah, of that. Easy for you to say. <laughs> what if we threw the badges out and, hear me out, um, replace them with no. wapus? So you actually do Ooh. have to catch them all. I, I think about it. Yeah. Oh, I like this. Yeah. I like this. So like a doc block wapu and like a... Absolutely. You know, XSS bug wapu yeah. and a... <laughs> You know, I mean, and also think about, think about the people who make custom WAPUs, like how much like business and activity we could give them. Non-stop WAPUs. Non-stop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Un WAPU. Unfortunately, nobody is listening to this show except the people sitting in this audience, though. So. And yeah. I'm surprised they haven't thrown it. I, I have stats to differ, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I did like... I, I feel like doing really good PHP, really good JavaScript, writing things with purpose, thinking about WordPress as a product, that's really hard. And if gamification can help people actually get involved more, I mean, why not lean into it as opposed to lean against it? Those things all sound WAPU worthy to me. They, they definitely do. So how do, we, how do we take an idea like this and then pitch it to somebody? And then how do we get another part of the organization to hear that pitch? How does that work? Like, how do we, that how do we back, get... That goes back to the thing Steve was saying, or whoever asked that, is, yes. is one part of WordPress talking to the other part of WordPress? Yeah, there's... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, there's... I know some I brought somewhere, it around, guys. I brought it around a little okay. bit. There's <laughs> definitely one of the community people. I, I know Cami Chaos is back there. Uh -huh. Right? You got to go find the people who have ideas. She's right here. She's waving at me. Yes. Uh, so so you, if you She show was waving at me. Just so you, you know. Can you go switch okay. the badges okay. to Wapus right now? Thanks. Thanks. Okay, cool. Make it happen. So, you know, if you, if you get <laughs> involved in WordPress, <laughs> you ideally show up to meetings, you meet people, and you say, hey, I have a crazy idea. And they say, that's crazy, but I love it. That's usually how the community embraces things. We're pretty open to whatever. 
So if, if someone like Scott shows up to my meetup and says, hey, I really, really want to see more stuff about uh, PHP unit tests, I would say, heck yes. Do you want to give a talk? He'll say, heck yes, right? It doesn't matter what you're doing. We have to be a community. Yeah. We have to talk to each other. I see you. I see you, Steve. Hey. Uh, no, no, no. no, no I, was, I wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing near you. <laughs> there's, there's a group that uh, started in... Um, in the WordPress Slack not too long ago, within the past couple years, uh, the WordPress hosting group. So a bunch of hosts, both managed and just standard web hosts, have joined together to talk about how to make WordPress a, you know, like ba basically here's best practices. Here are uh, things that we can be doing, um, even sharing like um, server config information yeah. with each other to make sure that the WordPress experience for anybody that comes to one of like the you know dozens or maybe even hundred hosts that all want to participate can do that and they can actually have like a head start on here is a best practice for your WordPress stack like yeah. hosting like, well and, and and that's and that and that's good because it's it's it doing those things it's all good f for all of their brands yeah right. Yeah, and technically speaking, a lot of the hosts are really similar now, and that's good. You should have staging, you should have backups, um, and those hosts should really fight to differentiate between customer service they're, and pricing. They, are, they think they're similar. They're, they're not that similar when you get into it. They, they offer similar things, but they act in very different ways. And the, the act part is the key part, right? So, like, <laughs> getting hot takes, but, like... Hosts are, are a lot more similar than they are dissimilar. And understanding that and finding the differences that really do matter, like that's, that happens as a result of people collaborating and trying to make sure that everything on the internet is fast, not just one host. And that's absolutely. a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. And Cosper wants to get a WAPU for being a host, so this, this needs to yeah, happen. The hosting WAPU, right? The hosting WAPU. He walks around right. like this, like a little, yeah. like he's a little host. <laughs> a little server. Just, just imagine a, a WAPU with my crazy hair and beard, and that'll be oh, the I see a, He's on your badge right I there. literally he's see a already, sticker. He's already right there. There he is. <laughs> see? There you go. I think we need to get those sashes so that, like, maybe this is something we could have at WordCamp Long Beach, Leo. We can have, like, sashes so that we can put all of our badges and all of our wapus on it, like we're Word Scouts. Well, I'm, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really, really relieved to say, because I really, because of the, the way you're coming through, it sounded like you said we needed fascists. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I would like to keep... We, we do not. We, no. need, we need less fascists. And we more need sashes. Sashes. Yeah. sashes. More sashes. Less fascists. Uh, all right, well, no, we we'll don't make that. And we can all be That's like, a hashtag. We can... We can wear sashes and then have our badges and be like, you know, like in the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and yeah. wear them to all of our WordCamp. And then we this can have my new idea. as well, like, we'll have, like <laughs> vegan ones. I think you have your theme. I think there's your theme. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just got very excited. So that do, never happened. Do do we want to do we want to talk about our other topic or do we want to scrap that for this water? No, cooler? let's do it. Really? Let's talk about yeah. Go for it. What do you think? How do, you, how do, we, 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 how do we do this topic? within, in, you know, we only got a little bit of time, but that might be but, good because it'll be a cliffhanger and then they'll have to listen to it really? the next one. Yeah. I and mean, so the question from the audience, what topic? and, and, and what I'm, I'm really, topic? I'm truly paraphrasing this question, but the way, based on the way I heard it is, do the internal WordPress development teams actually talk to each other? Uh, short answer is yes. Um, long answer Black. is it's really hard to talk to people all across the world. We all async. We are all in 15 different locations. So it's hard. But but let's talk, let's let's talk about the the nature of the question, right? Let's talk about the purpose of the question. Yeah. Right? And why the question was asked in mm -hmm. the first place. Right. Yeah. And why it's controversial. Okay. So there's a lot of complicated natures when you're building software. It doesn't matter what kind of software you're building. And there's a lot of different communities that are sort of micro communities inside the larger thing. And so. The hard part is there is so much information, there is so much communication, and how do you actually get all of those people to read the things, to hear the things? Everything is like if you go to like the, the meta or the core chats, there's hundreds of messages per every 10 minutes. It's like really hard to follow. So like, do people actually read all those things? I don't know. No. Do people actually <laughs> listen? I don't know. 
And then when people say, you didn't hear the thing that I said that was there, was on the P2 blog about this and this, it was like, we tried. Literally the reason why I don't use Slack. <laughs> it's a fire hose. This is I mean, literally maybe, the reason why I use maybe Slack. Maybe the bigger question is, Maybe the bigger question is, is Slack the right uh, communication method for all of these disparate developers and community members to be talking to each other all over the world? Or maybe because there's like- I, I, I find it difficult, personally. So we need a, like a P4 or P5, whatever number we're up to <laughs> yeah, now instead like, of P2? Maybe like a roundup type post or something that says like, hey, this is what's changed in the hosting space, or hey, this is what's changing in plugins, or hey, this is what's changing in themes. Because it's really hard to like filter through it. So unless you're actively doing this as a full-time job, which I'm not, like I'm as a core contributor, like I'm doing it as a part of my life, but a very small part, five, 10 hours a week at most. Yeah. Whereas the people who do it full-time can keep up. But I, and I can't remember where this came up, because this came up for us a couple of weeks ago, but mm -hmm. we were talking about either the WooCommerce team or the, or the Jetpack team or the core team or some, something yeah. was released and wasn't working within core. It wasn't a plug-in. Right. Remember exactly what it was? I, I, I can't remember offhand. The, the Jetpack part of it sounds, maybe it was during that topic that we were discussing <laughs> that. But it's, the, yeah, the, the, I don't know, it's like that, that idea of how do you get those two to really communicate. <laughs> Really, how how are they commu how, how are they communicating? You know what, what, what doing? you know what you know what it was is we were talking about like I think I think I brought up the I think I brought up the question of like is there essentially like a hallway that these folks are able to like bump into each other on the internet through some Slack where they're like hey so what's up with this or what's up with that and and how do those people Ooh, interact wee. with each other? What's up with that? <laughs> I mean, I have to say people try their best to talk. But yeah. it's, it's hard, you know, there's so many people involved and you really have to be active within it and you also have to be willing to listen to other people and you want to collaborate and you want to work out in the open. Right. Well, and, and, also, uh, the fact that, wait, the fact that uh, threading in Slack is like not good for accessibility makes Slack almost unusable in my opinion because without threading, it's almost impossible to stay on topic. And then at the same time, people are like don't thread because it's not accessible. So it, it, it causes a lot of problems. Yeah. So the and tool has that, a threading mechanism, but, but they tell people not to use it? Well, it's not accessibly like compliant with the way the screen readers like sit on top of it. So hmm. Slack actually has a problem. It's really hard if you're using a screen reader to use that with thread. Just, it's possible, hmm. but it doesn't really work well. So the advice is if you're using Slack with an accessible needed community, don't use those threads, which means that those conversations become really messy and we're dealing with this chaos in every channel. Wow. Yeah, I think that's- So basically it's like a giant group text that you don't, you don't know who half of the people are and uh -huh. everyone's answering a question that someone had two days ago and then responding to someone else's comment that someone else has already responded to. And it's this giant asynchronous conversation and then all of us somehow expect that to work really seamlessly and to be like, and get, well, and get really mad at people if they don't listen and haven't heard something. And it, it, it's a little crazy. The expectation versus the reality is really out of whack. Have, have, you, have you ever logged into the Slack channel, say? The, the yeah, one, I'm yeah. in the Slack right now. I'm, it's madness. It, it, it's a lot. It can be very overwhelming. Also, uh, something that we were talking about is like the hallway idea of having a place where people can discuss things with one another. Um, really, like the core room is for core. And the second you start kind of BSing with other folks about something else, you get reminded, hey, this room is for core. Oh, okay, where can I go? Well, we don't really have a room that y'all can chat in. Yeah. Go on Twitter and yell at each other. Yeah, but, go but on Twitter like, and yell at each other. And, and that's, that is what Twitter is for, is just yelling at each other. <laughs> no, I, I'm, but, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. But <laughs> not everybody uses Twitter, and a lot of the WordPress development community at least has a Slack account. Yeah. Uh, and, and can if, it, you know, they might not hang out in it. But, but yeah, maybe we do need a, a hallway. A hallway channel, maybe. A, a, a general. So are, are two, are two, our two main communication tools within the WordPress community are Slack, asynchronous, non-threaded Slack, and Twitter. No, 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 no. no. Well, like, also the P2 blog. What, what are we yeah. doing here? 
P2. P2. Yeah. Yeah, but but that yeah, okay. Just Not because you don't read P2 expensive. doesn't mean that every like <laughs> the developers in no, no, I'm just saying is it useful for this communication? That's yeah. all I'm saying. I don't I still don't think P2 blogs are useful for this kind of communication either. Yeah. They're very isolated. And so if we're talking about, you know, how does the whole entire community get access to that? It's, you know, it's, this is what we're talking about, right? How do people contribute? How do people participate? Look what, at are the we out time. of time? Well, we, need a, time. we need a WAPU badge for better communication. So, like, if you communicate better, you earn that badge. And then you can just go back to your old ways and you're good. Perfect. We solved all the world's problems today. I want to say thank you all in the audience for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Go over to our website at dpwatercore.com. You can look at all the things there on how to subscribe, dpwatercore.com slash subscribe. And uh, Steve and all the folks here that were doing uh, the, you know, the, um, the, the, the word camp here, we really appreciate having the uh, opportunity to have this venue and be able to discuss this sort of stuff. This was awesome. Thank you very much, all. You have a good rest of your night. Bye. <laughs> love it. We I love you all. Goodbye. Let's just leave Say up there all day. We'll just leave her up there during plug and yes. and heckle the crowd, to heckle the judges. She's like, I can't see you. That's the best idea. <laughs>